Okay, in this video we're going to look at going from the Arduino platform to the ARM platform. Now if you've been programming the Arduino Uno, going to an ARM microcontroller will be a big step. Now the ARM microcontroller is a very complex chip, there's a very steep learning curve, and the ARM microcontroller is, has very low power consumption, high speed and lots of memory, and that's why they use it in a lot of handheld devices. So if you're serious about embedded programming, you should have a look at the ARM microcontroller. Now the ARM microcontroller I picked was made by ST Microelectronics and the part number is STM32F407 and it's on their discovery board which you see here. Now this ARM uh, is a 32-bit Cortex-M4 has one megabyte of flash which you could write a large application has 192k bytes of RAM and it has an ST-Link programmer, which you see on the very top portion of the board here is a programmer that programs the microcontroller. And the USB connector here actually powers the whole board and you can download your code through this connector into the chip, into the microcontroller chip. Other things they added to the board is a MEMS 3-axis accelerometer, which you see here. There's a MEMS digital microphone, which is here. There's a reset button, the black button, and there's a, a user push button. Uh, the blue button and it's connected to the, one of the GPIOs. So you could download the data sheet for the STM32F407 from the website www.st.com and you could check out all the other features. Now the biggest mistake I see people do when they learn a new microcontroller like this one here is to download the large IDE and all the software tools they could find then try to blink the onboard LED. Now this micro is so complex that they get overwhelmed and they give up. So the key is, is to learn the inner workings of the microcontroller first. The actual hardware inside the chip. So next I'll show you the setup I use for learning the internal uh, hardware of, of this microcontroller. Okay, here's the setup that I use to exercise the features of the ARM microcontroller on the discovery board. And if you look at the top of the board, the USB connection that powers the board. And the first thing I did, I got a couple of 50-pin IDC headers, like that, connected together by ribbon cable. And I connected them to both sides of the board so I could get access to all the pins. So I could put my breadboard next to uh, the IDC header, and I could jumper any uh, wires that I need uh, for any projects that I want to do. Now, if you look on the right, you could see a FTDI uh, to serial adapter connected to uh, some of the pins on the IDC header there. That's connected into one of the UARTs on the discovery board. So you can see the TX and RX and ground line. That's my back door into the discovery board. So what I do, I, I erased all the memory of the discovery board and I loaded in a fourth operating system onto the board. Uh, it's called e and it's written by CH Ting. And that's what I use to get access into the microcontroller itself. So I could go into the microcontroller and I could walk around and I could look at the SPI ports, I could look at the, the I squared C ports, I could play with the CRC generators, uh, the random generator, random number generator. So that's how I exercise uh, the hardware on the board. And you can see I have a little program running right now. It's a toggle program and what it's doing every time I press the button, it's toggling the four uh, LEDs, the, the user LEDs. So I have a little contact bounce, software contact bounce program running to do that. And I could actually run another program to show uh, the, the gyro. Okay, in the last clip, we saw the accelerometer mapped to the four user LEDs on the discovery board to give a gyro type display. And if you look at the screen, you can see the code there that ran that. It was called gyro. So basically what it did, it, re it read the x-axis value and the y-axis value. And depending on the value range, uh, it turned on the corresponding LEDs. So right now I have TerraTerm running. It's a, uh, it's a serial terminal program running, talking to the serial port of the ARM, which is the back door to the micro. So right now I could actually send commands into the micro to do some te to test code. And what I could do, I could actually read the x-axis uh, of the accelerometer directly uh, through the serial port. 
So you see at the very bottom, uh, I have the x-axis question mark, and then there's a dot, and that means print to the screen, and then many means to do it over and over again. So if I, if I activate that code, you'll see the, the x-axis uh, value uh, on the screen, and I'll tilt, I'll tilt the uh, discovery board to, uh, to change the values. So the board right now is flat, and I'll raise up one corner of the one uh, edge of the board, the x-axis up, till it's vertical. Okay, I'm vertical right now. Now I'll bring the board down to flat again. So now we're flat. Now I'll bring uh, the other other edge of the board up on its x-axis, and you can see the values change there. So we're reading the accelerometer directly through the serial port. Now there's really no program involved. I'm just manipulating uh, the registers um, in the accelerometer. So I'll bring it back down and now the board is flat again. So next we'll have a look. We'll go over to the CRC uh, portion of the microcontroller and uh, we'll play around with the CRC. Okay, here's a bit of code that we could use to exercise the CRC generator on the discovery board. If you look up on the screen, we can see the first two words CRC.enable and CRC.reset. Now those two words initialize the CRC generator. So if we type the word init, it will run those two words. The next word is CRC, and that takes whatever we type on the keyboard and ent enters it into the CRC uh, generator. And question mark CRC will return uh, the CRC uh, checksum. So we'll type the word init to uh, initialize the generator. Now we'll enter uh, some data. So we'll enter four bytes, and I'll make it easy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one, two is one byte, three, four is the second byte, and five, six, seven, eight. Then we type CRC. They'll enter it into the CRC generator. Now if we type uh, question mark CRC, we'll get back the checksum. So that there is our checksum for the four bytes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if we send that code over, say, a radio, over a data uh, radio, uh, and we send the checksum with it, uh, at the receiving end, they can do the same calculations to see if the data is correct. Now one way to do that, you could send, uh, the, uh, we could do that over again. We go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, CRC. Now we could actually put in uh, the checksum, CRC. Now if we, look at, if, we, if we look at the checksum for that, it should be zero if it's correct. And we get zero, so that means that that, that checked out okay. So this is a technique that I use to learn their inner workings of the ARM processor.